Hello everyone, Dilish Mar Haddad here. In the first lab, I'm going to explain to you how you can configure the link aggregation and also we call it link bonding on Huawei switches, but also we can do it as well on routers. So as you can see here, we have uh, the first lab of uh, five points. And uh, this topic, the link aggregation, I'm going to divide it into two labs because there are two topics inside the link aggregation. The first one, which is how to configure link aggregation using the manual way. And the second one is using the static way, which we call it the LACP. So in the first lab, I'm going to show you how you can configure manual link aggregation. But before we start doing the lab, let me just show you why we need to have link aggregation and what is the importance of link aggregation in our network. So what is link aggregation? Imagine you have two switches that you want to connect them to each other. And you have two links like you see here, Ethernet 1 on Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 to Ethernet 2 and from two different switches. So if we leave it this way, normally what happens is the spanning tree protocol will block one of the ports, for example, this one, in order to not have a loop, because if you keep the two ports connected, then here you have redundancy, that means it can go this way on both sides and this way. So if we keep it like this, we will have what we call the uh, switching loop. And in this case, the frame will be moving and it will not stop causing for us to have loop in our network and that will stop our network actually. So what spanning tree do, it normally stop one of the ports, it will block it. And in case anything happen, for example, on this operational link, which is this one, if this port goes down, then this one goes directly up and it works. But in this case, the spanning tree will, is blocking for us one of the links. That means we are using only one link. So the link aggregation is a way that we can bundle the two links. For example, instead of having this link here blocked and this one is operational, we bond them here together. And also those two will make them bonding together. And in this way, those two ports will be represented by one logical port. So there will be one logical port here and also here one logical port. Okay, so the two ports will become like one port and then the switches will be looking uh, as they have only one port connected from one side to another side. And in this way, you have more bandwidth and then you can send more traffic from one switch to another. That's normally something we do it on the aggregate layer where we really need to have very fast connectivity between switches. Again, I have, I'm saying here switches, but also you can apply the link aggregation on routers as well. So now we know what is the link aggregation. We have two types of link aggregation. We have the first type, we call it the manual link aggregation. Okay, and that's the lab that I'm going to do now. And you have the second one, which is the static, or also we call it LACP, using this protocol, LACP. And uh, that's also one lab that I'm going to do it in the upcoming lecture. So manual and static link aggregations are similar in the term to bond two or more links together to have more traffic. But the difference between the two, that a manual, you have to put all ports that are going to be part of the link aggregation group. In this case, you put Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. And also here on the switch 2, you put Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So all ports are active. That means all ports are passing the traffic. Okay. While on the static link aggregation, and uh, normally we use the protocol, as I said, LACP, you can have, for example, those two links um, together and you have one third link here. Let's imagine that this link is connected to the two switch. You make it as backup. For example, that in case one of the links go down, so this one go down, then this link will be operational and will start also passing the traffic. So that's the main difference between the manual and the static link aggregation. Okay. So of course, with the labs, I'm going to show you more details about that, but that's in brief the main idea. Another thing to mention about the link aggregation that you should have all ports on the same speed. For example, if this one Ethernet port is having 100 megabit per second, then this one has to be 100 megabit per second, this one two, and this one two. If you have one port which is smaller bandwidth, so let's say this one is 10 megabit per second, it will keep working on the link aggregation, but it, you will have a lot of packet loss, actually frame loss, because uh, when we talk about switching, we are talking about frames. If you do it on the router, of course you have packet loss. So in this case, what you need to do, you have to ensure that all ports are consistent. That means they have the same bandwidth, 
and also they have the same duplex so you have to do them all full duplex of course we don't use any more half duplex so ensure that you, all your ports are full duplex another thing to mention also here that you cannot put for example fast ethernet and giga ethernet together okay so in this case the link aggregation will not work you have to have all the ports on the same physical structure so if you're using fast ethernet so you put all fast ethernet together if you're using giga ethernet then put all the interfaces giga ethernet together so this is the main idea of the link aggregation let's now go and start doing the first lab which how to configure manual link aggregation on huawei switches point number one check the speed and the duplex on s1 and s2 so i put here the lab picture so you can follow what i'm doing so we are still on the same scenario two switches s1 and s2 connected via ethernet 1 and ethernet 2 interfaces so uh, i have already uh, put here the ensp you can see we have ethernet 001002 and from the other side ethernet 001 and 002 okay so nothing special here and i have here the command prompt for the huawei so first we need to check what is the speed and the duplex normally on huawei switches you have most of the time the auto negotiation open auto negotiation that means the two ports uh, which are connected to each other they will negotiate what speed and what duplex they need in my experience i can tell you if anything which is auto please disable it and make it uh, hard coded by yourself so that means that you say for the port to be full duplex and uh, for the port to be 100 megabit per second as an example okay we are using here ethernet port that means we can go maximum to 100 megabit per second but first let's check what we have here so i go inside system view and from here i have to say display interface ethernet and brief and you can see here that those two interfaces on switch one ethernet 001 and 002 they are uh, up but they are duplex half and uh, 100 uh, megabit per second as a bandwidth so if i go to switch two now and uh, here I, I say display interface ethernet brief also you can see they are half duplex and 100 megabit per second and that's because there is the auto negotiation open port number one is done and we have seen that they are half duplex and the speed is 100 megabit per second because as i said auto negotiation is on now point number two change the speed to 100 megabit per second and the duplex to full on those interfaces so let's do that i will go to here and let me just clear so we can start from the top here and uh, from here what we need to do we have to go inside the interfaces i go to interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 and now if i change for example i make a duplex full do you see here they say please and undo negotiation auto first because auto negotiation is enabled so let's uh, remove that to remove the auto negotiation you need to say undo negotiation auto so we removed it i make the duplex to be full and speed watch mark we have 10 or 100 because that's an ethernet port so i will make it 100 megabit per second now we finish from ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 let's do for ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 i'll go to the interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 i would say undo negotiation auto and then duplex full speed 100 and that's it now we go to uh, switch 2 and then from switch 2 also i have to go to interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 I will say undo negotiation auto and uh, if you get uh, this error what you need to say here you go down and here to the user mode and I will say undo terminal monitor okay so this will not get for you anymore this notification it's not an error it's more like a notification all right so let's go back we changed the uh, we removed the auto negotiation and now um, what I need to do I will again to go to interface ethernet 0 0 slash 1 and then we say speed 100 megabit per second and duplex full that's for ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 I will go to the interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 should be slash 2 here and then I will say undo negotiation 
auto and uh, here I will say duplex full speed 100 megabit per second and in this way I have hard coded the interfaces which are connected to each other to have the speed 100 megabit per second and the duplex to be full duplex point number two is done point number three check if the change is done and whether the interfaces are up so we go to switch one and here i will say display interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 we can see that they are up and up without any problem we do the same for ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 and we see it's also up and up without any problem so i don't need to do also for switch 2 it should be up as this also on switch one is up the interfaces point number three is done point number four configure ethernet trunk interfaces on s1 and s2 and put ethernet 0 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 0 slash 2 in the ethernet trunk interfaces so ethernet trunk is the logical interface that you created to put those two physical interfaces inside of it remember we said if we go back here to the picture we said that we need to bundle those uh, two interfaces in order to be able to be on one logical interface so we said those will be bundled and those will be bundled and because we are using manual link aggregation then all interfaces should be part of the bundle so what we need to create we need to create here an interface called ethernet trunk okay ethernet trunk is the logical interface and also we have to create it here where we can put all those physical interfaces inside of it and then the switch will see the ethernet trunk as it is a real interface for it so he will not look to the ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 and ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 as physical interfaces independent physical interfaces it will look that those two interfaces are inside one port which he knows it which is ethernet trunk so for the switch ethernet trunk is his port so let's do that we have to go to switch one now and from switch one I have to create interface ethernet trunk one you can put the number here from 0 to 63 so I put here number one okay so that's the interface number and uh, once I create the ethernet trunk all I need to do I have to go to interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 and then I will say here ethernet trunk one so that means this interface is inside ethernet trunk uh, port then i will go to interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 and then i will say ethernet trunk 1 so that's what i need to do from switch 1 i will go to switch 2 again i will create an interface i call it ethernet trunk 1 and then from here i will go to interface ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 1 and i will say ethernet ethernet trunk 1 then I go to the interface Ethernet 0 slash 0 slash 2 and then I will say Ethernet trunk 1. So in this case I have added those two ports from each switch inside the Ethernet trunk interface. Port number 4 is done. Port number 5 verify that the link aggregation is formed correctly. So now we have made the configuration of the link aggregation how to verify. Actually we can say here display Ethernet trunk 1 as an example. So when you say display Ethernet 1 trunk, here it will show you that the uh, that you have here two ports, which are Ethernet 001 and 002, they are up and they are part of the uh, Ethernet trunk inside this bundle. And you can see here number of ports in the trunk, there are two. Okay, and uh, this will show that the working mode is normal. That means it's working without any problem. If we go to switch two, and also i will say here display ethernet trunk one you can see as well those two ports are listed here and uh, the two ports are up and the working mode is normal and now in this case the uh, bandwidth that are being sent from one switch to another is going to be 200 megabit per second and not anymore 100 megabit per second as it was before because the as i said the stp was stopping one of the ports now the two ports are operational without any problem port number five is done 
And with this point, I have just explained to you the first type of link aggregation or link bonding, also we call it, which is the manual link aggregation. So again, in the manual link aggregation, you have to put all the ports inside the logical port of the link aggregation, and they should be both active, working. And in this case, the traffic will be sent from the two physical ports, which are part of this logical port. And also I have showed you that you need to make the speed of the interfaces the same. That's the most important part, that the speed is the same. And also they should be from the same physical characteristics. For example, if you're using Ethernet port, then you have to have Ethernet ports only inside the link aggregation. And if you're using fast Ethernet, you have to put only fast Ethernet and so forth. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lab. I hope that this lab was informative for you and I'll see you in the upcoming lab.